Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daycare Online. Great that you have all tuned in. My name is Ronald Dame and I work for TEG Screen. I have been involved in the DKF event since 2015 and happy now to organize in this special time the DKF Online event. My role is to moderate this 20 minute speaker sort of NEAXAM and after the fifth, there's time for questions, which I will, isolate, which I will select from the Slider web. The title of this presentation is the end to end client regulatory and digital reporting solution that helps you solve the challenges of data integration, analytics and production workflow. And I have the honor to announce Mr. Clément Miglietti. Before becoming Nexom's head of product, Clément was the CEO of 100M a financial reporting startup that Nexom acquired in 2018. Prior to this, Clément also worked with BNP Paribas as the head of credit quantitative research. Clément, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, Ronald. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, yes, yeah, so I, I'm indeed the, the head of product uh, with uh, with Neoxam. And for those who don't know us yet, uh, we are a global player in the financial software space. So we provide data management, investment management, accounting management, and reporting software. And the, the topic today is, is really reporting. So it's going to be a, a fairly short presentation, but for those who like, please shoot me an email at impress at neozam.com for a follow-up discussion. I'll be happy to discuss, you know, your your problems, print some about solution, or just simply give you a, a demo of, of what we do. So, uh, Maybe before uh, answering the, the, the question of how to get reporting right, maybe it's important to ask ourselves why uh, to get reporting right. And, and I think the, the answer to this is actually quite simple. It's because it's an essential part of your, uh, of your service. Of course, in our industry, you know, like performance is essential, but performance can fluctuate. Whereas service will always be here uh, to help you retain both your client trust and, and also business. So uh, what does good reporting mean? What do people expect? Uh, so they expect uh, timely information, that's for one. Uh, they expect accurate information. Uh, they expect some information that is well presented. And also at times they will expect you uh, to comply with their requirement for uh, content and uh, as well for uh, for format. So what are uh, the uh, the implication of of this requirement uh, for you? So it means you need to be able uh, to uh, to have good data quality. Uh, and it's to, you need to be able to have a good uh, analytics as well as good business workflows to produce all this reporting. And it needs it, it means also that that you will need to to uh, to have the right uh, presentation in price structure. So if you try to put this together, you'll soon realize that this is actually fairly complex, uh, and that you will need some infrastructure that that can that can scale uh, to do so, and that all of this um, all of this can cost. So. Before uh, we actually jump into the solution, before I show you how to architecture a solution like this, let me stress one thing, uh, which I think is one of the key elements that you should uh, take away from this presentation, which is that uh, reporting is not one single topic. It's actually three uh, different uh, topics. The first one is client reporting, you know, which is about producing fact sheets, uh, portfolio statements, um, uh, as well as custom reporting. The second is regulatory reporting, which is uh, about producing reporting that is compliant uh, with uh, what the regulation bodies want. And the third one is digital reporting, whose goal is kind of like to be able to support a narrative for your uh, for your sales pitch. So, and I think it's very important to uh, to distinguish these these three use cases because for each of the use case, you will have very different requirements. So, for example, for client reporting, what you will want is flexibility. So, flexibility to accommodate your client requirements. For uh, digital reporting, what you want is interactivity. Uh, you want to you want to be able to kind of like run the show. Uh, for regulatory reporting you will care much less about the presentation because most of the report are actually pure 
data report. What you will care about is actually data traceability, uh, for example, and accuracy of your uh, of, of your metrics. So all of this to say, again, and this is one of the key messages that when you think about reporting, you should kind of like dissociate these three use cases and why not address them uh, separately. So now let, let's talk a little bit of the uh, architecture of, uh, of the solution. And this is probably the, the, the most important slide of, 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 the, of the presentation because it, it shows you what it takes uh, to, to build a, a reporting solution. So on the right, uh, you see you have the, the tip of the iceberg, uh, which is the data presentation layer, which includes you know, digital reporting, grant reporting, regulatory reporting, and which is where you're going to actually uh, create the, the visuals. But this is kind of like, this is not the, 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 the most important. The most important is actually what lays on the, on the left. And I'm, I'm talking about these three black blocks that you can see here, which are production workflow, uh, which is where you organize your, uh, your production, performance analytics, where, which is the module which is in charge of computing the contributions, attribution, regulatory ratios, and last but not least, the ABLE, which is the data management part uh, of, of your system. So ABLE stands for Accounting Book of Record, and the responsibility of this module is to centralize uh, all the assets data, liability data, benchmark data, and act as a data foundation for, uh, for your system. So uh, again, so the, the, the point here is really to stress that to get reporting right, you really need to have uh, these four things, which is one, a strong and reliable data warehouse for your back office data. Uh, you need a good performance system and uh, you need a, a good workflow system and you need as well a very rich uh, presentation layer. So um, let me quickly give you some details about uh, each of these uh, different modules. So let's uh, let's let's come back to to the role of the uh, of the able the uh, again the accounting book of record. So this is the this is going to be your your data warehouse. Uh, again, it's it's the foundation of your of your reporting infrastructure uh, because. Bad data means bad reporting, no matter what comes after this. Uh, and so you can think of this ABOR as a factory assembly line. So it's going to start by acquired data from third party system. So authenticated with them, retrieving the data, downloading it. Um, then it's going to standardize the data. And this is where actually most of the business intelligence lies. Um, essentially, uh, the, the goal here is to put the right data at the, at, at the right place. Then it's going to have to qualify the data. And this is where most of the business value, the, the value of the software uh, is. And, and so here, the goal is to test each data point and its uh, SLA. So they are going to be test, each data point is going to be tested for, for presence, for format, for uh, consistency, likelihood, business rules. And this is actually the step that is also the most labor intensive for you uh, because a human user will have to manually correct all of the, uh, all of the alerts and, and, and errors. And, the, and, 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 and after this, it kind of flow uh, more, more easily. You know, the, the data is consolidated and this happens automatically. It's enriched, uh, it's secured, and then it's distributed. To, to the other systems, and these systems can be either um, uh, the, the other module of the, of the reporting system, it could be as well a uh, third-party application, or there could be as well human users uh, who are going to consume this data, either uh, doing you know, Excel analysis, Python analysis, you know, whatever. So, but again, like the, the, the key takeaway is like in any reporting process, Data management is, is crucial and it has to exist, uh, whether outside or as part of your, of your reporting solution. Uh, let's talk quickly about performance and analytics, at least just to give you like the, 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 the key message, which is that you should uh, choose 
robust and very standard uh, analytics. And this is because uh, you need analytics uh, for such applications, which are not front office application, you need analytics that are easy to understand and easy to explain. And for this, what you will want are uh, so a robust core providing you know, all the usual contribution attributions and exposed risks, and you will want some flexibility around these uh, uh, around these uh, methods, uh, so that you can ensure uh, consistency across your your all your systems uh, firm wide. On this, you should watch as well for usability of the of the output, and by this I mean two things essentially. I need I mean ability to download. The results of the uh, of the analytics under a very usable format, so standard format, and ability as well to play with the results graphically, interactively using a, a, a good interface. So again, for performance and analytics, go for simple and, and robust. For workflows, I, I can sum it up in one sentence essentially, which is you know keep your workflows uh, short and, uh, and and simple. And, and, and manage the complexity of your business having several workflows. It's, it's much, much better than having one big, long, complicated workflow with a lot of conditions in it. And in order to, to, uh, to achieve that, you, you, you'll have to, uh, you, you need to have, you know, flexible triggers, a good step modeling, and also a good UX uh, to, to, uh, to, to organize all of these workflows. Let's come back very quickly uh, on the business cases, uh, and I'm going to start with uh, with uh, digital reporting. So the, the the main use case, the central use case for digital reporting is is sales, uh, and a, a good digital reporting application can help you pitch better. It's also very useful uh, for investor relations to enhance the kind of usual. Uh, PDF or, 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 or document uh, or document report. The, the the typical challenge of digital reporting is a design challenge, uh, and that's the key takeaway here of, of this slide. Is uh, the the difficulty of the exercise is is to have a good report that can work uh, across multiple devices that's interactive enough uh, to make it interesting and to allow for a, a very uh, good and deep analysis. Uh, going back to client reporting, which is the still the core use case uh, of, of the reporting and whose goal is really to achieve best-in-class uh, client service, uh, your, your challenge here will be to handle the, the complexity. Uh, nowadays, it's fairly common uh, to, uh, to see a fund that, that, that has 30 or so report different reports associated with it. Uh, and this is because of a great complexity of distribution, regulations, and, 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 and also customer expectations. So here, your key challenge, and, and the, the, the one that are very specific to the client reporting, are going to be the template management. Uh, because very quickly, you're going to have hundreds of templates uh, to, uh, to manage. And this is what you should really uh, watch for. You should you should try to get a good template management uh, management system. Last, uh, coming back to, to the regulatory reporting. Uh, so here, I'd like to stress one thing. So regulatory reporting is, yes, very much about compliance, but it doesn't mean, it does not mean that it's not a a business topic as well. It is a business topic because when you're going to try to expand to uh, new territories, uh, you're going to have to comply with this uh, regulatory reporting obligation. And if you can't, uh, it will hinder your ability uh, to, to, to develop your business. So it's not only a compliance uh, topic, it's really a, a business topic. And, and here, the, the challenges are as, as I would say twofold. Uh, the first challenge is actually to understand the, the regulation uh, and to really understand what you need to, uh, to, to compute. And this is uh, actually quite tough because regulation is not always very, very mature and it's moving quite, quite a bit. So you're going to have to understand and then watch for, 
for changes. And the, and, and the, and the second challenge of regulatory reporting is really a, uh, a data traceability challenge because for those type of reporting, you will want to guarantee a, a full, um, a full of, uh, audit track. So these are really like the, 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 the two big challenges uh, that, that, that the good solution should address for, uh, for regulatory reporting. So I see that, that, that time is running out and I, I, I want to save, you know, a few minutes for, uh, for question. So I'm, I'm going to here conclude, uh, while I, I'm playing this little video, of some digital reporting. So, so here to recap, uh, Providing best-in-class client digital and regulatory reporting requires setting up an end-to-end -end solution involving data management, workflows, analytics, and a presentation infrastructure that includes either digital dashboarding or document templating. What you will be looking for is flexibility and, and industrial scale. And, and to finish, you know, again, on, on the key challenges that uh, that uh, that you're going to need to uh, to focus on um, the key changes are data quality um, excuse me data quality uh, the main goal of the business workflow part is to keep them short and, and, and simple for analytics you should go for standard and and robust uh, so that you have analytics that are easy to understand and and easy to explain and for the the presentation part Digital reporting is all about design, uh, whereas document reporting is all about managing the complexity of having dozens of, of variations on on a theme on a theme to uh, to maintain. All right, so Ronald, if we have you know a couple of minutes left, uh, I, I can maybe take you know one uh, one or two questions. So thanks, Clément. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, you really guided us through the whole, let's say, process and challenges of data integration, analytics, and, and, and the production workflow. So I really like that. But you also showed us uh, a live example, uh, although that was a video. But I'm pretty sure that people want to know more about that. So they, they can um, connect to you via the website where we have your email listed. Um, but I have a couple of questions here from the uh, from the audience, and one of the questions is uh, yeah. uh, as follows: How do you differentiate from other reporting tools like Vermilion or Coric, and how do you structure the pricing? Is that per report or per fund? Okay, so it's it's, it's very much of a business question here. <laughs> so so yeah, so the, so the difference lie actually uh, relies actually in the in in the architecture of the solution i gave so we are very much of an intuit solution uh, with a big emphasis on on data management uh and i think our data management abilities is what really sets us apart from the from the competition but that's for one um and, and then i think we're really top of the game uh, when it comes to digital reporting uh, actually that's that's where we started uh, you know, Impress is the results of uh, a company I had funded a few years ago, and we style off with uh, with digital reporting. So this is real strength. We are really digital native, and this feels really, and this shows in all our interfaces. Uh, so that was kind of like for the for for the differentiation against the the, 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 the competition. Second, the the pricing, it's. Um, so it has actually two components. There is kind of like a basic license, uh, and and then it's uh, mostly per fund or per portfolio uh, price structure. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this way we can accommodate as well very uh, very small firms that, that manage you know like a few funds, and we manage to be very competitive on the, with with these guys, and we can also scale. Uh, so we can we have actually also like very large uh, clients. We have actually Natixis in France, Cassis, um, guys who manage 
trillions of, uh, of, of euros. Okay, so another question from the audience. Um, does your yeah. solution respect or incorporate existing solutions like BICE, Abacus, and regulatory site? Or um, can you elaborate a bit more on that? Do this, does your solution incorporate that? Like BICE? So sorry. Which, uh, sorry, well, which is the... So does your solution what, what, respect or incorporate existing solutions like BICE, Abacus, um, on regulatory side, or maybe existing uh, day way high real realizations? Yeah, so, uh, so, so our solution is almost entirely proprietary. Uh, so it does, so it does incorporate some software, some third party software, which is mostly open source. Uh, but we can also integrate with uh, all the providers. So, for example, uh, we are not obliged to actually do the data management part or the uh, performance part. We can also integrate with third-party software that are going to uh, take responsibility for covering either the analytics or the, 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 the data management part. Uh, and in terms of you know deployable solution is kind of the same. Uh, we we can go through different deployment mode. Uh, we can deliver it on the cloud uh, through uh, host hosting partners. Uh, we use a lot uh, Amazon actually in Frankfurt, uh, or we can deploy it on premises as well. Okay, okay. Thank you, Clément. So um, thanks a lot for this presentation. Um, yeah. That's it for the audience. Please reach out to Clément for more questions. Uh, his email address is in, on the web, our website. Uh, so we now have a 30 minutes break and then we will come back with our next uh, uh, slot, which will be moderated by Anja Hoa, Owen Hacker, and it's the slot of Tetralog. So um, see you later. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.